To premiere her new video for Bedtime Story in 1995, Madonna decided to throw a big party at a New York disco. Here's how it all looked and sounded in our special Madonna's Bedtime Story and Pajama Party. I think you're going to like it. Maddie's here. She's up in the GJ booth with Junior Vasquez. This is really a wild scene here. Uh, we're going to be doing license up for a while. And um, let's go up and see what Madonna's doing in the, in the DJ booth. I've often wondered, you know, how, how much of a DJ is she? Look at this. Hi. Well, what's going on here? I have to stop eating like this. Are you, are you helping here? Uh, I, I think I'm shaking the table. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, this is a great idea for a, for a pajama party. What's going to be the highlight? Um, hopefully when I read the bedtime story. Okay. Will it be something sort of racy and exciting? No, not racy. It'll be, um, it'll be hopefully poignant and touching. Oh, good. Good. Now, tell me something real quick before we go. Is there going to be a tour? I, uh, I'm going to eat the microphone. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to make it work, but I really want to concentrate on Ibiza, so it's a tough one. I may have to wait till afterwards. It's an amazing video. We're going to be seeing that in a little while. It's an incredible piece of work. Thank you. How long did it take to put together? Um, the actual shoot only took six days, but the planning before and the post-production after took months. So months and months. Since I finished Take a Bow, actually, I've been working on it. So. And Junior has a new club opening up soon. We're going to be talking about that with him. Yes, and we're very sad that the Sound Factory closed. What's What makes Junior such a great DJ? Um, Besides his body. His soulfulness. His soulfulness and, and, and his feel for what people want to hear, you know? He, fee he, he feeds the crowd, you know what I mean? And he, can, and he also controls it. It's amazing. He's doing well up here. Do you... oh, let me turn over here. Now, what's he... <laughs> now, what's he... What's... His water dripping from the What? Oh, sorry. So, Hi. So, Evita is... A... This is Junior's bag. <laughs> a good-looking bag Madonna, Madonna, what are you? This is my belly. Wow. There's, some, there's something. There's something in your navel here. Good lord. Is that? Uh, well, I, I won't even ask. It's not painful. Oh, well, good. It's sort of a letdown, I suppose. So, Evita is a definite go, right? Yes. Thank God. The director? Um, Alan Parker. Yes. We'll be talking about that in a little while. I think we'll be back in the uh, coffee shop. What are you going to play next here? Are you? Playing um, Junior's remix of Bedtime Story and. I asked him, what are you going to play after this? Are you going to play some tribal stuff? If you want, I'll play anything yeah. for you. Whatever Anything you want. tribal or Latin, that's the mood I'm in. Okay. OK, 
Okay, Tribal, let's go see what Allison's doing out here in the crowd. Allison, are you there? Karen, I am here. I'm jealous. You are FOM, friend of Madonna. Of course, Madonna released her album last October. Who knew what to expect? We recorded nine studios, three countries, four producers. We got a kinder and gentler Madonna. Who, how, why, where, when, what? Here's the story, the bedtime story. People are really maybe for the first time in a long time, really just concentrating on the music. I didn't give myself a set of rules when I went in the studio and said, okay, and now I have to write this kind of music. I can't offend anyone. I felt like I was staying in one place, you know what I mean? And I wanted to, I, I sort of had my heart set in doing something with much more of an R&B feel to it anyway. To achieve her goal, Madonna enlisted the royalty of R&B production, including Babyface, who penned and produced her first number one single in three years, Take a Bow. With Madonna, it was really cool. It was, um, we, we kind of could go straight to what we needed to do and get the work done. And riding together, we, we saw the same vision. If we had been not agreeing with each other, that would have been interesting to see. I mean, collaborating with anybody, it's very intimate and it's hard. Sometimes it doesn't work with people. And you get in a room and you, you don't feel comfortable. Or So I, I went through a few of those. I pretty much had a wish list of people that I really admired or had, you know, sort of had my eye on working with for some time. Also recruited for the Bedtime Story project was another single name songstress, Bjork, who wrote the title track with producer Nellie Hooper. Nellie did her, her album and Actually, one of the reasons I was dying to work with uh, Nellie Hooper was because of Bjork's album. I thought it was amazing. Well, basically, she asked um, my friend for a song, and my friend asked me to help him. And I did it in a way as a, like a favor to him, really. Right. Not, you know, no offense to Madonna, right, but right, right, right. I was kind of more doing it as a present to my friend. Madonna turned over her tracks to DJ Junior Vasquez to create club-friendly versions of LP tracks, giving them an extended life and audience. They sent me a cassette of the song. When it was 100 beats per minute, I said, oh, God, what am I going to do with this? Madonna's different because she's like really on top of everything. The house mix is just as important to her as the, what her original interpretation of the song is. The uh, critics seem to have backed off on this record. Is that a good sign? And have backed off? I mean, they seem to like it. You know, not getting publicly flogged. Yeah. Um, yes, well, I guess it's because I'm not being a bad girl right now. Publicly, Madonna's been more sugar than spice of late. She showered Letterman with Valentine affection and gave a lavish performance at the Brit Awards. And backstage, she even took on the infamous British press with a smile. Yeah, it's Toby from the Ozone. Uh, what made you decide to perform at the Brits this year? Hmm. It's a tough one. Because <laughs> I just always have so much fun when I come here. I'm not pregnant. I don't care if you're pregnant or anything. I just want to know, are you going to take this album on the road this year? Um, I'm 99% sure. <laughs> good, good answer. And for now, videos will have to do Secret, filmed in Harlem, was the first single, then off to Spain for Take a Bow, and now Bedtime Story. And for the record, what exactly is Madonna's bedtime like? I have, like, drapery around all my beds so you can shut the whole world out. Oh. Very private. And now you know what Madonna's bedroom looks like. Hey, who are you? My name's Nicole Marks. And where are you from? I'm from Maryland, but I live now. Now, what would you call this little outfit you got going here? Um, I think this is like the housewife uh, slash club kid thing. Now, where did you now where'd you get your outfit? This was three dollars at a thrift store. Very nice. I looked all over the city and I ended up at the thrift store right around my house. Perfect, perfect. Now you said you were a club kid a little bit. Tell me for somebody who's sitting at home, how do you conquer a club like Webster Hall? It's four floors, eight million different little rooms. You just be yourself. You get bunked out, you party, you say hello to everybody, love. Well, I think that Madonna might have followed that advice earlier tonight. We saw her having a fine time at her very own bedtime story pajama party. Take a look.
to herself, but she's definitely not partying alone tonight. Of course, we're live from Webster Hall in downtown New York City at Madonna's bedtime story, Pajama Party. I haven't seen any pillow fights break out late, but the night is still early. Of course, a whole bunch of people are out here on the dance floor, but Kurt Loder managed to steal away with Madonna to talk to her. Hey, Kurt, Madonna, what's up? Well, we are back here in the coffee bar at Webster Hall. Madonna, can we see your shoes for a minute? These are now, <laughs> these are shoes. There are some shoes for you. Be sure to talk into the mic. Oops, I'm sorry. They go with my blue nightgown that now, I had Is this had something earlier. you actually wear? Do you own lots of pajamas? Are you a pajama person? I do wear, I have lots of pajamas, but it depends on the mood. You know, there's the pajamas I wear when mm. I'm alone, and there's the pajamas I wear when I'm there, Those would be different kinds alone. of pajamas, you're saying? And then there's the pajamas I don't wear. Oh, <laughs> maybe so, we'll see them later. Yes. You, you, as we're talking out there, you definitely have the role in Evita now. Could you tell me what interests you about Evita so much? She was the wife of a dictator. They both seem mm -hmm. a little nuts. What, yes, What's truly. the psychology that drew you to this? Well, I think she is a truly fascinating woman. Mm -hmm. And I think that she, I mean, I think it's really unusual that a woman in, in, in a Latin, Latin American culture, yeah. I mean, not, not Latin American, Latin cultures are traditionally very, very macho, very male oriented, that a woman could rise to such power and have such effect yeah. on, on a nation, not even in, in, in the whole world, you know. Yeah. And um, she was, she's a truly kind of like psychotic, uh, fascinating individual yeah. because, you know, the reasons, I mean, yes, it was a dictatorship, you know, the Peronist Definitely. regime, and she did do a lot of shopping. <laughs> but. <laughs> I think her shoe collection rivaled Imelda's, but... Um, now, what was the, the idea behind this, the bedtime story party? Why get everyone out here at midnight to dressed in pajamas? Just a, a whim? Or? Well, it's just better than your usual, like, put the video out on MTV kind of album promotion. Although, that's enjoyable, whatever. too. Yes, sure. it is. It is, but it's just something different. Another good excuse to have a party. And you're going to be reading a bedtime story. Is this something yeah. that was particularly important to you as a kid? Um, no, actually. Most of the bedtime stories that I heard when I was younger, my father made up. Oh. But um, this story, I just happened to have read it about three weeks ago, coincidentally, and I thought it was really beautiful. Um, Is it metaphorical in any way? Does yes. It? It's called uh, Miss Spider's Tea Party. and um, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Spider's Tea Party. It's, it's, it's um, I think the metaphor is that you can't judge, uh, uh, you can't judge someone until you know them. That's so true. Yes, yeah. it is. I think we'll learn something from this. Hopefully. Now, the, the video, which we'll be seeing soon here on yeah. MTV, is an amazing piece. Where you give birth to a flock of pigeons or something. What's going on in that doves, video? Doves. White doves. Doves. Whatever. It symbolizes peace. Or pigeons. Yeah. What's going on yeah, in the video? It seems or? very metaphorical also. It is. It's like a, it's a, it's a surrealistic kind of landscape. It's, it's like... A dream, yeah. you know. I mean, when you have a dream, you know, and you wake up the next morning and you're like, God, it's sweating it, weird and things were beautiful. happening, and grass was going growing out of my tennis shoe, and then I saw that person, but their head was on backwards. I mean, you know, I mean, like weird stuff happens in your dreams. I mean, in That's my true. dreams, anyway. Now, do you do you march into the director and say, I had this idea for a video in which all this stuff's going on, or did you? Um, well, I worked with Mark Romanek before. He mm. did my he did the rain video, yeah. and. We pretty much sat down, and he, when he heard my album yeah. before it was even released, he said, I have to do the video to Bedtime Story, so whenever it's released, I want to do it. I said, okay. And he had some ideas, um, uh, the, like the original, original ideas sprang from three female surrealist painters, Remedios Varos, Frida Kahlo, and uh, Leonora Carrington. Uh -huh. So that's where the original uh, germ of the idea came from. And they, I mean, you know Frida Kahlo's yeah. paintings, right? I mean, they're very, 
they're very female. Um, mm. They're very all of the all of the women did a lot of weird self portraits. Yes. Portraying themselves in pain, giving birth. They're very they're very um, they're very feminine. Mm -hmm. Not feminine in a demure way, but that but yeah. like there's and there's a lot of symbolic um, stuff in the videos, like eggs and uh -huh. and you know at one point I'm pregnant and, and doves fly out of my stomach yeah. and I think it's it's a uh, from the, a woman's perspective. Did it, did it make you, uh, when uh, Take a Bow went to number one, making you the all-time record holder among women for number one record, even eclipsing that Houston, Houston girl, right. did that make you, like, happy? Uh, that's an understatement. <laughs> Extremely. Was there a party at your house? or? Um, um, no, I don't think there was a party at my house, because when I found out, I think I was on my way to Europe or something. Oh. I'm not really sure. Are you going to be out of action for the next year or so, making this movie? Um, you mean to the public eye? Yeah. Uh, well, pretty much. I mean, I have another video to do, and uh, I mean, I really do want to. I I want to go on tour. Believe yeah. me, I'm dying to. I'm dying to perform in this this record. Yeah. But sorry about that. Um, I have to keep this popsicle up near my mouth. <laughs> uh, but I've been waiting five years for this role, yeah. and I am not going to screw it up. You know, I need to. So there's a possibility we might not see you on tour. Is that? I think there's a possibility that would be after I shot the movie. Ah, oh, okay. Well, this would it be another extravaganza sort of tour? Would it be like Madonna with a guitar, folky kind Madonna of? Madonna unplugged. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If there's I a thought. Yeah. There is a thought, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, I I've entertained that thought, but I think it only for a moment. Well, thank you very much. It's sure. great to be here. We're enjoying your pajama and I'm, party. I'm very happy that you wore your pajamas. Thank you. I was. Yeah certain that you wouldn't show up in them. Oh, well, I did. Let's go back and see what Allison's doing out there. Allie, are you there? Well, I tell you, this is quite a scene. Everybody's in their jammies, men, women, and everything in between. It's going to continue all night long. We have more mixing from Junior Vasquez coming up, and Madonna's going to climb on top of that four-poster bed and read us all a bedtime story. Stick around. It's Madonna's bedtime story, pajama party, and MTV continuing it on. Stick around. Welcome back to a Madonna's Bedtime Story Pajama Party. Quite a scene we have here. Yeah. Thanks for being here. It's going to be quite a night. Madonna's going to be out here. She's going to read a bedtime story. We're going to see her new video, which is an amazing piece of work. For those just tuning in to the Madonna saga, we've taken a bunch of her videos over the last 12 years and mixed them together into a mega mix. Here it is. Take a look.
and hopefully you'll see them on TV. Um, I love you too. Come on, you guys. Please. All right, here I go. Well, now I'll just wait until you all shut up. All right. One lonely spider sipped her tea while gazing at the sky. She watched the insects on the leaves and many flying by. If I had friends like... All right, I'm going to start again because I don't want to be interrupted, you guys. Come on. Have some respect. Shut up. All right, here I go. One lonely spider sipped her tea while gazing at the sky. She watched the insects on the leaves and many flying by. If I had friends like these, she sighed who'd stay a while with me. I'd sit them down on silken chairs and serve them cakes and tea. <laughs> Two timid beetles, Ike and May, crept from the woodwork that same day. But when Miss Spider begged, please stay, they shrieked, oh no, and dashed away. <laughs> Three fireflies flew inside that night, their spirits high, their tails alight. They spied the web and squeaked in fear. We'd better get away from here. 
The little trio did not feel they'd care to be a spider's meal. Four bumblebees buzzed by outside. Please come to tea, Miss Spider cried. The four ignored her swaying there. She waved a tea towel in the air. She took a cup and tapped the glass. Then one bee spoke to her at last. We would be fools to take our tea with someone who's so spidery. Okay, hold on. With <laughs> Within the shadows of the room, just peeking from behind a broom, five grinning faces bobbed and peered. Miss Spider smiled. Her heart was cheered. Descending for a closer look, she danced into the gloomy nook, but sadly found those jolly mugs belonged, alas, to rubber bugs. Some ants strode in. They numbered six, but ants with spiders will not mix. She brewed them tea from hips of roses, the proud platoon turned up their noses. A fine bouquet concealed its prize of seven dainty butterflies. Miss Spider watching from the wall was not aware of them at all. The tea table was set for eight with saucers, cups, and silver plate. The cakes were fresh, the service gleamed, yet no one would arrive, it seemed. Her company in no demand left her a cup for every hand. Nine spotted moths kept safe and warm in shelter from a thunderstorm. They stood beneath an open sash and watched the jagged lightning flash. Miss Spider dropped down on a thread, a silver tray above her head. She'd hoped to please them, but instead, they flew away in mortal dread. They've left me all alone, she cried. She dabbed her eyes and sadly sighed. It's plain no bug will ever stay. Her tears splashed down upon the tray. Ten tiny steaming cups of tea were perched atop her trembling knee. She sipped and sobbed, then heard a cough and turned to see a small wet moth. A fragile thing so soaked by rain, his wings too damp to fly again. She smiled and took a checkered cloth to cloak the frail and thankful moth. They talked and snacked on tea and pie until his tiny wings were dry. Then lifting him with tender care, she tossed him gently in the air. The moth told Ike, then Ike told May, who went from bug to bug to say, there is no reason for alarm. She never meant us any harm. So later on that afternoon, assembled in the dining room, 11 insects came to tea to share Miss Spider's courtesy. Twelve tender violets in a vase, presented at Miss Spider's place. Set by her chair so neatly spun, she munched the blossoms one by one. Her friends were glad to watch her feast upon the floral centerpiece. It was a great relief to see she ate just flowers and drank just tea. Miss Spider's reputation grew before too long, our hostess knew each bug who crawled or hopped or flew, and all their lovely children, too. And the moral, and the moral to this story is, the moral to this story is, don't judge a bug until you know her.
right, let's recap. So far, <clears throat> we've seen a mega mix of Madonna's greatest hits. Uh, we've heard her read a bedtime story. What could possibly be next? She's got a new video out. The last one she did was done in Rwanda, Spain, as you may remember, very naturalistic. It had uh, bullfighters, bulls, this and that. This one is very, very different, directed by Mark Romanek. It's an amazing piece of work. Here it is, bedtime story, Madonna. Welcome back to Madonna's Bedtime Story Dance Party here at Windsor Hall in New York City. You wouldn't believe what's going on on stage here. Madonna's uh, recording with a bunch of pajama-clad people. I'm here with Junior Vasquez, the world's greatest DJ here in New York. Junior, what are people dancing to now? They're dancing to Dogma, it's Tribal Track. Tribal Track, where does one pick it up? Uh, probably 8 Ball Records in New York. Great store, great guys in there, and she loves tribal stuff now. Hey, a little a little promo, come to New York and buy that record. It's gonna be great, so don't go away. Madonna's bedtime story, pajama party here at Windsor Hall in New York City, the only talent over 24 hours a day in the country. Junior, tell me something about this mixing thing. When I play music, everyone leaves the room. What's the secret? What's the, what's the secret? Maybe it's the music you're playing. Definitely, it's that, but uh, I'll educate you on some good music. You gotta come to the new sound factory. Okay, when's it opening? Soon, we hope. Okay, all right, let's see what's going on with Ali. Ali, are you there? I think you have Michael Musto. What's happening? I do have Michael Musto, Kurt. I'm with Michael Musto from The Village Voice, a chronicler of parties. Now, as someone who's followed Madonna's career, how does this event appear with, within the context of her stage and Amazing. career? Amazing. I've been to a lot of parties, as you know. This is one of the all-time best. Absolutely. Why does it, what is the importance of someone like Madonna? I mean, she's a huge star. She doesn't really have to come out and do right. this anymore. Not only is she here, but she is giving and giving till there's nothing left to give. She's dancing, say, reading stories, dancing, thank she's you. talking. To Z100. She's just giving. And she's talking and going on. It's Madonna's world we just live in. Everybody Absolutely. Let's go out on that night. Such a great pajama party. It's going to go on into the night. Nobody's sleeping. Thanks for joining us for Kurt Loader, MTV News. I'm Allison Stewart. We're out here.